All right, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you guys are. This is Dr. Shiva Adure. Today, we're going to continue our interview, but we're going to focus on um, the topics of how do we really shatter the swarm? You know, what is it going to take to shatter the swarm? And uh, for those of you who are just joining us, um, that's what the discussion is going to be about, how we actually shatter the swarm. So when I look at the questions we're going to uh, go through, um, the theme of that is, what does it take to shatter the swarm? One is sort of intellectually asking questions. The other is, um, you know, in, intellect and theory is one thing, but action is everything else. And everyone knows our movement for truth, freedom, health is really about shattering the swarm. All right, everyone, we're going to be discussing today about what is it going to take to shatter the swarm? Um, m most of you know that I've spent my entire life really as a system scientist, um, as an engineer or as a inventor in many, many areas. Uh, but my fundamental uh, area that I've really been motivated by is how do we transform systems, not work from within, but how do we actually fundamentally change them? How do we get off the plantation? And as we're going to talk about is how do we actually shatter the swarm? Um, it takes a lot of effort for people to really understand what a movement is. People use that word, uh, but 99% of people have never actually built a movement. Um, they don't understand the theoretical basis. They've never built anything in their lives. Uh, the word build is actually a word that they use, but they frankly have never built a company. They've never built any type of innovation. They've never built software. They've never built any technology. They've never, let's say, worked on a farm. Uh, so they use these words in a very lackadaisical manner, uh, but these words are very, very powerful things. And we're going to talk about that. What is the swarm? What does it take to shatter them? What is the current conditions we have? Um, and I hope to make this very practical uh, rather than just theoretical and sort of mental masturbation. Some people just like to have these random discussions and I'm going to keep it very real, as you know, so it's not something random. So let me bring our interviewer. Are you there? Hello, hello. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so, here. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. So let's just start. Um, I want to emphasize, we'll take a couple of breaks. I have about an hour uh, from now. We want to emphasize to everyone before we start, you know, I'm running for president of the United States. We don't do enough actually selling our campaign, telling you guys to take action, but I have to do that. Otherwise, I'd be remiss. Everyone should go to shivaforpresident.com. And it's really important that you guys participate rather than just be on the sidelines. That's not what this is about. So go to shivaforpresident.com, get one of these bumper stickers and put it on the back windshield of your car. You'll reach about 100,000 people daily. And you'll also have a profound impact because you'll see a lot of people say, hey, what is that? Who is that guy? Why are you doing that? Why aren't you supporting Biden or Booby or, you know, Trumper, right? And you'll have good discussions. But anyway, that's what we're going to start with. So let's just jump right in. We'll take a, another break to really talk about the movement for truth, freedom, and health. And every one of you should be a truth from health warrior. Uh, we'll take another break and then we'll come back. Let's jump right in. Okay, Dr. Shiva, I heard all that. I understand you will nix and or respond to any question in the context of shattering the swarm. That's fine, no problem. Yeah. But being that this is within the within our forum, I'll approach it our way. And then again, you you appreciate or a tab you're, or you're, go, you're going sort of you yeah, you're going sort of in in and out. You're going sort of in and out. Can you? Yeah, but maybe you should speak closer to the mic. But yeah, all right. Let's just go. What about now? Yeah, much. Okay, better. welcome to welcome to the Matrices Warrior Chronicles, where we search for the one today four three twenty four. We continue with Dr. Shiva of Shiva for President .com by asking questions formed directly by carefully rehearing our two twenty three twenty four first interview link to at matrices.substack.com. Dr. Shiva, next question. Have you studied our recent article posted at matrices.substack.com encouraging you as if in a martial arts strategy hyphen technique to use the opponent's energy against them to embrace rather than fight 
the claim that you're not natural born by asserting, I am natural born in addition to being naturalized. And here's the evidence proving it, such as family registry records and or birth certificate affidavits from family members knowing you since a child, showing you are not a werewolf, not an extraterrestrial, but yeah. a living, breathing man, just as the founders of the US Constitution had in mind. If not, we strongly encourage you to use that document uh, with all the great ideas so none can say you've not proven your natural born status as opposed to unnaturally born by cloning or test tubes or whatever. Your thoughts? Yeah, so I think the best thing I wanna do is, um, let me just bring up a couple of things here, which I think I can share. I may have to go from your medium to mine, but uh, let me see if I can do this here. Um, I'm gonna share something with you. Um, okay, so let me bring this up here. I have to, I think I have to share, I'm gonna stop your screen and share my screen so you can actually see this. Um, we have to go here, let me say. Chrome tab, okay. All right, so you should be able to see my screen. Do you see it? Okay, so let me uh, bring something up here to set context on this. So um, the obviously, you know, I'm naturally born and we've discussed that in many of our things, so this is not a new thing. The a state of Wyoming um, recently asked me to prove that I'm naturally born. I'll show you the letter that we're gonna be sending to them. Um, but the practical issue right now that's going on is the following. If you look at the context of this, um, how the courts look at it and how others look at it, obviously I can say I'm naturally born. I came out of my mother's womb and all that. Okay. That's over here. The reality is to the average person who's been bamboozled, um, they associate naturalized citizen not being naturally born, um, and therefore you cannot run for president, all right? That reality is coming not only from the concept of the founders never actually defined what natural born was, or if natural born is natural born, you're coming out of your mother's womb, you're not cesarean, you're not in vitro, you're not a robot, you're not genetically cloned. Let's leave that over here. So I wanna talk about the practicality of what's going on. And it's very important to understand is that in the current context, when the founders put together Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution, they said there were three qualifications for being president. In fact, they had a fourth, which was, they said he, which means only a woman, uh, I mean, only a man could be president. A lot of people forget this, that's referred to that in the neighborhood of that clause. But the bottom line is you have to be 35 years, you have to be resident of the United States for 14 years, and uh, or live here for 14 years, and you have to be quote unquote natural born, which is never defined. Interestingly enough, the Marquis de Lafayette, um, uh, some several years later, was designated, uh, was anointed as naturally born, even though he was not quote unquote even born on US soil, um, and all of his heirs were denoted as naturally born, all right? So this term was never defined, but more importantly, what people really need to understand is that history moves forward and you have to look at where the arc of history is going, the wave of history. So we had the 14th Amendment, which um, had a very important clause in there, which was called the Equal Protection Clause. And that was in the 1800s. And then after that, something also important occurred. Um, there were some very important court rulings. You see the Supreme Court ruling um, in Bowling versus Sharp cre clearly stated that the 14th Amendment, which applied to equal protection at the state level, also applied at the federal level via the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment. So simply put, the 14th Amendment and the Fifth Amendment were made equal in a sense. So you cannot discriminate by race, natural origin um, um, uh, at the federal level and also at the state level. Prior to the Bowling versus Sharp ruling, in 1954, the, the issue of equal protection was limited at the state level. Federal government could theoretically discriminate, but 
Bowling versus Sharp was an important Supreme Court ruling that changed that. Then in 1964, directly to address this natural born and naturalized citizen issue, another precedent setting seminal lawsuit took place, it was called Schneider versus Rusk. In Schneider versus Rusk, a German naturalized citizen had gone to live abroad. And when he tried to come back, the US government said, you cannot come back in. You've exceeded the time you've lived abroad because they had a rule saying a naturalized citizen, if he lived abroad, I forget the exact number of years, over 10 years, could, could lose his citizenship. Schneider argued this was nonsense because this didn't apply to a natural born citizen. Anyway, the Supreme Court ruled in his favor unequivocally stating a naturalized citizen and a natural born citizen are equal. Okay, very important to understand. Um, it, the case should have ended there, but the problem is you don't have people understanding the law. You don't have people teaching the law. You don't have people, students learning history or civics anymore. So the bottom line is when you put that set of the 14th Amendment, Bowling versus Sharp and Schneider versus Rusk, and then in 2012, the FEC ruled unequivocally that a naturalized citizen can run for office, for president specifically. Okay. In 2011, there was an important, interesting event that took place. A guy called Hassan, H-A-S-S-A-N, a lawyer, filed a very theoretical lawsuit. In that theoretical lawsuit, what he said was that he should be able to run as president invoking the 14th Amendment. Okay. Very important to understand this. The founders didn't want theoretical shit occurring. They wanted real bottoms up movements. So Hassan files in New Hampshire and in Colorado where he was being denied ballot access because he was not a natural born citizen. Well, in Colorado, it gets taken all the way up to the federal court and eventually to the 10th Circuit Court, which none other than Neil Gorsuch was a presiding judge, the circuit court judge. Neil Gorsuch is, everyone should know, he's now a Supreme Court justice. So Neil Gorsuch in the ruling in 2011 in Hassan versus Colorado, Gorsuch ruled that the states have a lot of leeway that they can decide who they want to put on the ballot or not by invoking the constitution. Let me repeat that again. Current Supreme Court justice 12 years ago in Hassan versus Colorado ruled that the courts have enormous leeway. They can decide if they want to invoke the constitution to keep a candidate off. That means the states he ruled have the rights to disqualify a candidate for president, federal level running for office. All right. So everyone said, oh, there you go. See, a naturalized citizen cannot run for office. People would point at Hassan. All right. But right after that, the FEC ruled, in fact, he can run. Then the issue becomes, can he be president? Now fo forward to March 4th, 2024. Re literally about 30 days to the day. What happened on March 4th, 2024? The gentleman called Donald Trump is also thrown off the ballot in Colorado. Okay, and I'm, I'm sorry. He was thrown off the ballot in Colorado several months before. The Supreme Court overturned that ruling in Trump versus Anderson. Anderson was the plaintiff in Colorado. He said, look, Trump tried to overthrow the U.S. government, violating Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. So he asserts a constitutional provision and says this guy is unqualified, just like someone asserting Article 2, Section 1, saying Hassan was unqualified at the state level. Anyway, that goes up to the state lower courts, state appeals court, and ends up at the state Supreme Court of Colorado. And the Supreme Court of Colorado rules that indeed the state has the leeway. They can disqualify a candidate for president by invoking the Constitution. In this case, it was Section 3, Article, uh, sorry, Section 3, 14th Amendment. In Hassan's case in Colorado, it was Article 2, Section 1. Anyway, boom, that goes up to the Supreme Court. What is the Supreme Court rule? The Supreme Court unequivocally in a 9-0 decision, 
even the left and the right, whatever the fake left and the right, they all agree that, and this is very important, that only Congress of the United States, only Congress of the United States can have any say for a federal official, like the person running for president, um, who gets qualified or disqualified to get on the ballot. Very important. They said that the states can disqualify or qualify a state official, but the states, except for, let's say, notwithstanding, oh, you have to get so many signatures of some electors to get on the ballot, they cannot invoke the Constitution. Absolutely not. And guess who also was part of that 9-0 ruling? Neil Gorsuch. So what, what happened? Why is Neil Gorsuch in 2024 agreeing that the states cannot keep a presidential candidate off the ballot, but the same Neil Gorsuch 12 years before said Hassan could be kept off the ballot by invoking the Constitution. What's the difference? I'll tell you what the difference is. Hassan was running a theoretical campaign. It wasn't real. The founders didn't want randomly people just poking the bear of the Constitution. And this is what a movement is. He didn't have a movement. He wasn't running for office. He wasn't out there building a website. He didn't have hundreds of thousands of volunteers collecting signatures like I do. So when I filed on January, 2023, knowing that the swarm would attack my efforts to get on the ballot, I, have, I filed what's called a declaratory relief lawsuit. Declaratory relief says, hey, government, and we filed the lawsuit against Merrick Garland and the DC Board of Elections saying, look, I believe that when I try to run, you, some of the states are gonna try to throw me off saying you're not quote unquote natural born. I did that in June of 2023. Well, about two months ago, Indeed, Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, and the D.C. Board of Elections said, oh, you cannot run because you're not natural born. Now, check this out. The main reason that they cited was that you don't have a real campaign. Very important. And that brings up this document. Very important to understand this. Otherwise, this is where people need to understand theory versus practice. So let me bring this up. So what am I talking about when I say that? What I'm talking about is this very important document. So they, so what happens when you file a lawsuit, you're the plaintiff filing a lawsuit against the defendant. The defendants typically go to the courts and they try to file a motion to dismiss, which is basically tell the judge, there's nothing here. This guy shouldn't even be in the courts. He has no standing. Okay, let's dismiss this case. That's what they typically try to do. So they said, they didn't lead with natural born. So it's fascinating. They said he has no standing because he's really not running for office. They wanted to use that basis to invoke Hassan. Here's a problem. And I want to show this to you because you'll see how we got them by the balls on this. Okay. So here, by the way, I file my own lawsuits. And this is a lawsuit that I filed. And it says plaintiff's opposition to their motion to dismiss. So it says, I just want to point out a couple of highlights. The plaintiff, Dr. Shiva Iduri, a bona fide candidate for president, respectfully submits his opposition to defendant's motion to dismiss. This court must, must notice I say bona fide candidate for president. Very important, I use that. The court must dis, deny the defendant's motion to dismiss since defendant's arguments are, are, are premised, defendants meaning the opposition, on four false misrepresentations. By the way, these are the defendants here, okay? Four false misrepresentations one of which is a bold-faced lie for which this court must sanction the attorneys. Look at what they wrote in their motion to dismiss. Everyone got to read this, okay? It says the defendants, I said the defendant's argument that plaintiff lacks standing is based on a big lie. This is what they wrote. Quote, they didn't talk about natural born. They said the candidacy is no more than theoretical and plaintiff has not taken any steps in support of his purported candidacy for president, such as assembling a campaign apparatus, engaging in political advertising, creating a website, or completing any formal documentation. Think about this bold-faced lie. Why are they saying this? Because they want me to equate me with Hassan, not Trump. You see, both cases a constitution was invoked. Well, I said a few keystrokes on the internet immediately brings up the campaign website. Here it is which plaintiff or candidate launched concomitant with this formal campaign movement. And I made it very clear that it is hard for this plaintiff 
and sh- should be for this court to believe that in the year 2024, Gary Thompson and his attorneys are incapable of using the internet to find this website. Discovery in this case will reveal the reason for defendants making such an egregious misrepresentation. So that's the first point. And then we submitted a 140 page affidavit with pictures after pictures after pictures of all of our people on the campaign ground in all 50 states. So these guys are fucked, okay? In terms of the fact that they led with this completely egregious lie. The second thing, so we we give all the evidence. We also expose the fact that the DC Board of Elections said, oh, he's not even running for office in DC. Well, they haven't even released the papers to run for office. We then go very clearly through their other misrepresentations. The other misrepresentation is that um, the defense pre- presented to this court that the state officials, federal officials may deny a presidential candidate access to the state's ballot by disqualifying the candidate on constitutional grounds. Well, this is absolutely false because Trump was d- denied initially as an insurrectionist. They can't deny me as even natural born because the Supreme Court on March 2024 revealed or uh, decided that only Congress can do that. All right. The next thing is they forget. They, they believe that it's okay to discriminate. You cannot discriminate between a natural born citizen and a naturalized citizen. That was already been adjudicated in the courts. And finally, they say, I face no imminent injury. Well, the reality is in Wyoming, we got a letter saying that they won't even give us the papers to get the signatures. In Utah, after we collected all the signatures, now they're asking me for my natural born proof. I don't have to show that. It's That would be like saying, show me that you're white, okay? That's called absolute racist national origin discrimination. And then finally, in the argument section, we go through, number one, Congress is the only entity that can decide my qualifications, if I'm qualified or not. That's been adjudicated. That's here. The second thing we make sure very clearly here is that we want to refer to the Hassan case that Hassan, we agree, was not a bona fide candidate. He was just a lawyer trying to poke the bear. I'm actually a real candidate. We have a movement. We have hundreds of thousands of people helping collect signatures. And finally, we expose the fact that they both face lie to the court. And then the Equal Protection Clause under the law, it is illegal to ask me to prove that I'm natural born or not. I don't have to go down that route. It's illegal, okay? And then the fourth thing, the third thing is, we actually have immediacy of injury because even the DC board said, even if you come here, we're gonna throw you off. So anyway, what's powerful about our opposition is that they did not expect me to write an opposition, okay? Um, They expected to think that I would just, you know, cower away, write some garbage uh, opposition, but we've written something quite extraordinary. So. That is really the issue. I don't need to argue I'm natural born or not because it's already been adjudicated. You cannot discriminate between a natural born citizen and natural born. So I'm not going to go on their playing ground. So I hope you understand that. Dr. Shiva, with all due respect, no one would dispute that you are brilliant. No doubt a lot of people hate you, but they certainly respect you for your brilliance and your actions. However, you're missing the point. We'll quote the line from the movie, A Few Good Men, when the Tom Cruise lawyer character says to the Demi Moore lawyer character, privately in a restaurant conversation, you need to emotionally prepare yourself for the fact that we're going to lose. We're going to lose big. The courts are little more than, in our opinion, criminals that legalize themselves, then use public schools to brainwash people to think that they're legitimate. So if this thing goes to the U.S. Supreme Court, there's absolutely nothing that can be done to stop them from simply either not hearing the issue at all, or if they hear it, put some nonsense down on the paper, and then you have to live with it. You need to prepare yourself, sir, I think. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. minute. How many court cases have you filed and litigated in federal court? Quite a few. You've actually litigated in federal court? Uh, litigated on every level. Okay. So if you watch our, our lawsuits, we know the courts are screwed up. You don't need to, you know, mentor me on this. We have always told our people the courts are screwed up. But to try to say, oh, I'm natural born and prove that is not going to get you anywhere. That is mistaken. 
the approach here is to get to the point very clearly. I don't have to prove that. And we're not here to educate the courts. We're here mobilizing people. And you need to get this very clear because this is the essence of why, how we shattered the swarm. We're not here to go in a legalist route like a bunch of these constitutionalists do all day and jack off all day and mentally masturbate. We're not here to go run for office for the sake of winning a political seat. We're building the movement. And when you build a movement to the extent that the fighting on very fair grounds in a lawsuit exposes a contradictions, we win anyway. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to really get this because you seem to think that we think we're going to win in the courts because we know they're absolutely corrupt. But if I didn't run in 2020 for my U.S. Senate campaign, if I didn't discover the backdoor portal to Twitter and we didn't expose it to bare view, you know, half a billion people throughout the world would not know this. That occurred because we did run. And you need to get that. We're building a movement. We're not here to file lawsuits. So you can tell that to people who are naively filing lawsuits. You need to understand that we are building a bottoms up movement and you and all your friends should get involved in that. You guys should help us collect signatures. Why? Because you start facing the state. It becomes real. It's not theoretical. And that's what needs to happen. People need to get their hands dirty a little bit, understand how the state behaves. Because if it's just in the head, they don't really understand what a movement what a movement is. Our filing that lawsuit, that lawsuit in particular, brings up the contradictions of the state. Sir, respectfully, uh, you're somewhat temperamental, so you tend to interrupt while we're trying to complete a thought, which is fine. We can respect that. We try not to interrupt you as you speak, but the we acknowledge that you may, but you're talking to me as though that, oh, you don't understand the government is corrupt. So let me tell you, the government is corrupt. <laughs> I'm not talking you, you to you. That's, I'm that, not talking that's to you. Highly, I'm talking, that's highly, I'm talking to everyone. I'm no, not but talking you said, to you. you. You said you need to respectfully understand. True. And, our, and the, the people in our I movement the already understand that. The issue is, do you understand that we're building a movement? I do. But what okay. I'm saying, when I use the word you, I don't necessarily mean you specifically as an individual and or uh, all of the individuals within the Truth, Freedom, Health movement um, that are listening. I'm speaking to the wider, to every possible person that could be listening. And there's no telling who might be listening. You might have Supreme Court uh, justices, so-called listening. I do not, we at Matrices Warrior Chronicles, we do not dispute that you may in fact win. In fact, we're hoping you win. We're hoping that you are president of the United States this coming in January, you win in, in November or whatever. Uh, you have our vote. The, the point is, and in, and in fact, you might, but the key is not litigating things. The reason they put these nonsensical uh, arguments in paper is they want you twisting and turning and, and getting emotional and upset and, and responding to the stupid things they put down. This is typical lawyer tactics. The, 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 the lawyerly approach, in, I'm not saying to not do what you're doing, I'm saying in addition to doing, in addition to doing, to supplement by making it really simple. If the phrase in the constitution is 35 natural born citizen of the United States, just break the phrase down. Okay, what does it mean United States? It's talking about a political entity and not a place. Otherwise it would have said natural born within the United States as if it's a, a location. So you need to uh, put out, yeah, Ed, uh, Ed, why, why don't you go file your lawsuit on that level? And you'll see that'll just get thrown even in the trash immediately. Those things have already, they're not abstract concept. All the constitutionalists do all day is they jack off on these concepts and it's not gotten them anywhere. We know all the, it's not yes. state. No, let me finish. You're not yes. understanding what is occurring on the ground reality, the course of history. And you have to meet history at the right point, and then you have to advance it forward. You can't just say, oh, yeah, the United States is this thing, and that, yeah, it's this administrative thing. It's not in D.C. I've heard all that. But they're not. They're going to throw that in the trash. Go through my opposition. Go through it in detail. Then let's talk, because you haven't read it. So let's go on to the next question, because we're going to, um, and, you know, you have to get temperamental. You have to get angry. 
you have to get upset if you can't be talking like this, like a monotone voice. It's not real, man. We have to. There's nothing, we there's have nothing to, wrong with that. We would well, say your, temper, your ten, temperamental state is righteous indignation. Right. And so what I'm supposed, saying is read, put it absolutely. Read, read the opposition and then we should have a discussion. But you haven't read it. You should go read it very carefully. Then I'll just summarize by a, a statement made. I think her name was Linda Kennedy, a disbarred lawyer from eternity. I don't know, attorney, uh, Virginia. Yeah. Uh, the phrase was the facts and the law don't matter. The facts and the law don't matter. We know that, Ed. We know that. What, what, what matters is making it simple so that the audience understands because much more powerful than. Um, yeah. 99% of the audience thinks There's, natural born. They do not understand that natural born is equal to naturalized citizen. It's been adjudicated already. It's done. That's a simple message here. Number two, the states have no right to disqualify a candidate running for president, period. That's the two messages. That's fine. If you don't want, if you don't want, if you don't want to supplement your brief by making it even simpler and say, "Look, I'm natural. I'm born. I'm a citizen. This is the United States." The brief. Well, what I'm saying is, that if the system was was re reasonable and and logical and fair, all you'd have to do is define the word "natural," "born," no, "citizen," you're, you're, "United States," "should qualify," and that's it. No, but it's not. You're, 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 you're not. You're, you're missing the fundamental issue. That's like saying, "Prove to me you're black." You don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that. I'm not on the fucking plantation. So be it. I don't have to prove that. When you go down that path, you're already sucking up to the, the swarm. You don't have to do that. You don't. A woman so does not it. have to then say, if, if, suppose a woman says, oh, I have to prove um, that I can run for president. You don't have to do that. You just run. It's already been but decided. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to prove that you're actually doing a campaign. That's also ridiculous. It's called stand you're obviously up. doing a campaign. No, 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 no. This is this is a good yes, but they had to attack the fact that I had no standing. You see, the first thing that the courts try to do on dismissal is venue and standing, standard operating procedure. If you've adjudicated, you know this. A, are yes. you in the right courtroom? And B, do you have standing? So they have to say, oh, he's not running a campaign. He's really not running for president. They have to do that. They had to do that for two reasons. A, to deny me standing in their courtroom, and B, to equate it to Hassan. That's what they were doing here. Because Hassan was a doofus who was not really running for president. He was just filing a theoretical lawsuit. It is far different than the founders wanted things to come bottoms up. They knew that they may have made a mistake. They said that let it be non-justiciable issues. Are you familiar with that term, non-justiciable? Non-justiciable means let the political process decide. There are certain things the courts shouldn't even adjudicate. That's what's important about the March 2024 ruling, because the courts are saying we don't even have the right to decide who gets on the ballot and who doesn't. Only Congress can. So if a robot wanted to run for office, the courts cannot use the Constitution to deny that robot access. If the, if the robot gets enough signatures, enough electors, it can go on the ballot. If it wins the presidency, and then Congress can convene two-thirds of them and say, nope, the robot can't be on there, or pass a law. That's what happened with the women's movement. When Susan B. Anthony said, I want universal suffrage, they laughed at her. She went, built a bottoms-up movement, and then you had a law created. So the founders wanted to see these bottoms up movements come obviously they didn't want bloody revolution so they said let bottoms up movements come if the political process brings new things then we must conform and that's the essence that's the beauty in how way how the founders thought and that's called the let the political process decide and that's what the courts ruled for whatever reason it's a good ruling it fundamentally says yeah, let's say Trump even tried to overthrow the government. You don't have a right state to decide that. Let him get, if he if he gets enough votes, he gets elected, Congress can decide whether it invokes Section 3, you know, uh, the 14th Amendment.
but I don't have to prove anything. I don't have to say I'm natural born. I, I, I came out with my head this way or, or I'm not Caesarean or this and all that. I don't have to prove that at all. So the letter that we wrote to Wyoming, the secretary of state basically says, you know, I got your letter. I meditated on it. I prayed on your letter and I should show you the letter. Would you like to see it? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. There you go. Our message is go fuck yourself. I'm not going to prove to you I'm natural born. I don't have to. People already died over that issue. We don't have to. The issue is a natural okay, born so, person is a citizen. So be it. Yep. So be it. So be it. If you do not want to supplement your, your brief that way, no problem. I will not be adding an amicus brief. And I believe the pronunciation you is could, the term non justiciable. It sounds familiar. Or not. The word you use. It's non justiciable. But you can file whatever brief you want. Any, everyone is obviously can file any brief. The argument here is I am off the plantation. I'm not in South Africa. People say, prove to me your citizen, show me your ID. I don't have to do that. The instant I start going down that argument, I'm playing into their game. I don't have to prove that. There is and, and, equality. And we, we, you and I may be playing into this, their game at this moment simply by arguing because ultimately what it comes down to in our view, our experience shows that if you have enough eyes looking at the case, if, if you can somehow generate enough noise so that when and if it hits the, the U.S. Supreme Court, which it probably will, the only way they might say, yeah, you have the right to, to run is if they're afraid of some type of consequence because enough of your uh, uh, constituents, just disciples are saying, well, yeah, yeah uh, not going to happen. Yeah, that's, that's why I recommend that's why, that's why you have to build a movement. It can't be done just by posting something on the Internet, which is controlled. You have to get a bottoms up ground movement. There's no other way. Well, have, you, have you considered a plan B whereby if the uh, SCOTUS ultimately just will not rule on an issue and they won't explain it, which they, they can legally, they create their own docket and they don't even have to uh, address the thing. They're just not going to add it to our docket, period. End of story. Yeah, they, can, you, you they get can do that. They can do that. They okay. Work, they this, is why, this is why I love the idea. We love the idea. That we heard you say once and one time only, which we may have misunderstood, which is having every single person, individual, man or woman, that actually um, votes for you to actually take the ballot, showing your name on it, beside their photo, put it on social media, everywhere, on the internet, so that if SCOTUS will not allow you even to run, you can still show millions upon millions of faces tied to the ballot right right on the screen so that no one can deny it just shows it exposes even deeper how fraudulent the system is because yeah, you so, see the people so so why don't you do that why don't you do what? get involved in our movement and do that we have a bottoms up movement we're getting people on the ground to collect signatures to get on the ballot we've already got on the ballot in two states that kennedy couldn't even get on we're building a movement so I love people who give ideas, but my response is do it, support us, do the work. We don't need, we have, we have a plan. It takes us, we do meetings every evenings. We have a massive organization. So if you have an idea to do that, do it, let's do it. But the bottom line is we already have a movement. We are out there, but the issue is us getting on the ballot in any state is like taking a spear right into their hearts because they don't expect us to get on the ballot in any state. And this is what's important to understand. Us getting on the ballot in any state is a victory and them denying us after we got on the ballot raises even more issues. Remember, the lawsuit we filed is a declaratory relief lawsuit. Anyway, let's move on. You need to go read the opposition to really understand what we're doing here. And I really think you and your whoever it is should come to our open house and get involved. Because I talk to a lot of podcasters, they love me doing these interviews, but I don't see them do any work after that. They don't get a bumper sticker. They don't get us, uh, they're not handing out flyers. They don't do any campaigning. They think talking is it. Let's get on the ground. The future is on the ground. All of this stuff is controlled by the same people that we discovered in 2020. Because we did that lawsuit in 2020, because we have our movement, a half a billion people knew about it long before Twitter files, et cetera. We need people to help us build the movement. Let's start walking the walk. I'm just going to take a quick break here. Um, I just want to let everyone know that, you know, the conversation we're having here comes down to this fundamental issue of 
building a movement. And this is very hard for people to understand because building a movement is far different than I do a lot of social media video. I do a lot of discussion. I talk about all issues. But at the end of the day, I go out in the rain and the snow and I hand out flyers. I meet people. That's what our volunteers do. And this disconnection is why there's no fundamentally change. People talk, 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 but they don't have the wherewithal to even get a bumper sticker and put it on their car. And after they do that, they go, oh my God, I got honks. All these people said something. So that's one thing everyone should do. Get one of these bumper stickers. Number two, everyone should get involved in collecting signatures. Why? Because when you go out and you collect signatures, first of all, you meet other people. The second thing that happens is you have to face another human being face to face. It builds a whole different set of experience or, or you develop a whole different set of experience than most people have not done. So it's really important for people to do that. Get a bumper sticker, volunteer. And if you have a ton of money, donate. That's fine. But when you donate, I give you back stuff. But it's really important for people to participate, however small. I enjoy talking, but I appreciate someone. We can talk for an hour, but I appreciate the person who gets out for an hour and helps us collect signatures or hands out ballots or helps us get on the ballot or hands out flyers. That's hard for a lot of talkers to do. All these social media influencers, that's all they do. They're talking, 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 writing stuff, trying to build their views. Yeah, it's interesting for me, but get on the ground. And that's what needs to happen because without getting on the ground, all of this is frankly just bullshit. It's just like talking. It's mental masturbation. So let me play you this video so it gives you an understanding of what we've been doing on the ground. Who would have ever thought I'd be running for president of the United States of America? I was born a low caste untouchable in India's caste system, a system of aristocracy, oppression, and racism. My name is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I'm an MIT PhD, a Fulbright scholar, a scientist, engineer, entrepreneur, and inventor. My family and I left India to come to America on my seventh birthday. I grew up in the working class neighborhoods of New Jersey, playing baseball, mowing lawns, painting houses, and coding software. My friends and neighbors are blacks, Italians, Irish, people of all races. As a 14 year old, I wrote 50,000 lines of software code to create the world's first email system and was awarded the first US copyright for email, recognizing me as its official inventor at a time when copyright was the only way to protect software inventions. I did that long before I ever came to MIT, revealing that big innovations can occur anytime, any place by anybody. Growing up, I saw politicians dividing us by race and religion in both America and India to have us fighting each other while they remained safe in their gated communities and in their playgrounds of Hollywood, Martha's Vineyard and Silicon Valley. I'm a fighter. I fought racism and exposed their imperialist wars, fought for workers and put my life on the line against global corruption. I never wanted to run for political office. All that changed when I saw working Americans as never before being duped by the establishment and the not so obvious establishment across left and right. We were being sold out and made to forget why we came to America and why America existed. Lawyers, academics, billionaires, celebrities and politicians, elites, Clintons, Kennedys, Bidens, Obamas, Bushes, black and white have hijacked America. They printed trillions for their friends. They delivered crumbling infrastructure, corruption and racism. They transfer trillions to themselves, dividing black and white, fear-mongering and fake science, lockdowns and censorship, dirty air, food and water, pushing drugs upon us, making us sicker. We've been sold out, one set of rules for them and another for us. We deserve a warrior with a history of courage in putting everything on the line for you, who believes in you, not them, who has created a movement bottoms up for truth, freedom, health. I've exposed their lies at the right time never waiting until it was popular. I've exposed their false gods who exist to lead you back to them. I've exposed their fake science of lockdowns and masking and provided you solutions to fight them and win and protect your immune system, saving millions. I expose Fauci, galvanize the fire Fauci campaign when others remain silent. When they stole our election, we sued the government and Twitter in our historic 2020 federal lawsuit, exposing in bare view the government and big tech censorship infrastructure the unholy alliance between government and social media companies. Where was Elon and his grifters? They stood by the sidelines and did nothing. They did not use their megaphones to help us when it could have made a big difference. Now our movement grows for truth, freedom, health, independent of all of them. Every day millions are learning the science of systems, the knowledge the elites do not want you to have, so you may learn how to think, stand up, and fight, independent of the establishment of left and right and their fake heroes. 
Now it's time for you to join the movement to win back America, to win back truth, win back freedom, win back your health. That's why I'm running for President of the United States. This race is about you. This race is about truth, freedom, health versus power, profit, control. We've had enough. They think we'll fall in line and vote again for their lawyers, celebrities, billionaires, and chosen ones from above. We choose our heroes from below, from the rank and file who do what is right at the right time, not when it's convenient and popular. They can never represent us. What America needs is a movement by the working people, for the working people, who are educated, organized, decentralized, and fight for independence from their systems of control. And that movement exists. It's ready for you. We don't need them. We need us to go bottoms up, neighbor to neighbor. My journey, your journey are all the same. It's our time. It's time we had one of us. It's time to win back truth, freedom, health, to win back America, be part of this historic movement, all the way to our victory on November 5th, 2024. If you're an American citizen, pledge your vote now for Dr. Shivaya Dure, the independent candidate for U.S. president. No matter where you live, you can be a part of this. Volunteer as little as 20 minutes a day. Don't delay. This is Dr. Shivaya Dure, and I approve this message. Paid for by Dr. Shiva for president. A.C. Denton said, you know, a lot of people do these interviews and we don't see them ever acting on the ground again. So I can't, I can't over um, emphasize this to those of you listening that, you know, we said, how do we shatter the swarm? You know, as an engineer, things aren't like a physicist being sort of just theoretical and with your beard scratching and smoking a pipe. This stuff is real and it's not real to most people who don't get on the ground and meet other people and connect with other people and actually build a movement. In that video, there's an important scene, I'll play it in the, the next video before we end, where in 2020, the government of Massachusetts, after they stole our election, we filed a FOIA. They have 10 days, a FOIA is a Freedom of Information Act. We wanted them to give us records, particular records of participating voters list. Well, anyway, we went to different cities and they had uh, Massachusetts has 350 cities. In Boston, they had 10 days. This is the city of Boston. Well, they hadn't given it to us. So guess what we did? This is what a movement is. A movement is 40 of us marched right into city hall. And this was when you had to wear masks. We didn't wear masks. And, and police, like 20, 30 police came out. And we said, we want this. We're not leaving. In a few minutes, the head of the city council, whatever this, uh, the mayor's office came out. And I said, look, you're violating the law, but we had the force of 40, 50 of us right there. You know what? We got that in 20 minutes. That's what a movement is. And I want people to get their head out of their ass and really talk about this. I'll do interviews all day, but I want it to be based on practicality of what we do. The reason we are running for office and if we, to the extent we file legal lawsuits, it's to educate people and to mobilize people. And that's what we did in 2020. We're the ones who mobilized the Fire Fauci campaign. We're the ones that educated billions of people on what's going on through our hard work. We're the ones who expose a backdoor portal to Twitter. And in spite of all that, they will censor us because we're the real deal. And what we need is all these influences out there to get off their butt and get on the ground and not worry about their views and clicks and views. Because it's really, um, frankly, I may have a policy that if I do an interview, I want to see you on the ground and collect signatures. Otherwise, I can't take the question seriously. So let's go back to our interview with that context. Hold on. Let me bring you in. I got to bring you in. Uh, there we go. So people can hear you. Okay, let's continue. By the way, every Thursdays at 11 a.m. and 8 p.m., we do an open house. That's where we bring people together, new people introduce themselves, and it's a great opportunity. We get people to work in many, many different ways, and it's a global movement. So go to vashiva.com slash orientation. Again, a um, lot of people who, who've been doing this for a while, they also have to learn how to let go of their egos and get involved. It's one thing to talk. It's another thing to walk. Let's go. Okay. Um, this is not part of any question on a script, pre-prepared. This is simply improvising. If we can hopefully complete the thought without being interrupted. Um, the point of litigation as we see it is twofold. One is if you are going to win, fate, destiny, 
the only way is by litigating. So you must litigate. That's the system. The second purpose of litigation is if the corruption is so deep that they will dismiss and or refuse to acknowledge the suit at all, you can say to your movement, we did everything we had to do, and they still wouldn't give us relief. That makes the movement even more powerful. It may make it 10 times, maybe a thousand times more powerful because you can show that we did every single thing and they still wouldn't give it to us. And your, your impassioned speeches as um, one you gave a few minutes ago supports our argument that you don't ultimately even have to have political office in order to be perhaps more powerful than the politicians demonstrated by the way you go into these buildings and if they don't do what you want, not you as an individual, but you as a group, then uh, there are consequences they don't like. And so they exactly. capitulate. They right. so, uh, so my point, yeah, my point is even if uh, SCOTUS refuses to hear the case and or hears the case and says, no, he's not natural born or whatever, if they make up some nonsensical thing and do not allow you on the ballot, you still win because if in fact you yeah, can we, show- we, we, we get that. Look, one of the things, you see this diagram here? You know, this is what we presented in federal court. It shows the exact entire censorship infrastructure from this woman who called Twitter to have me thrown off in the middle of my federal campaign. This is in courtroom testimony now. All the characters that are involved in that, you can go to Win Back Freedom from the Zuckerbergs, the entire involvement of the entire Harvard, MIT, North Atlantic Council elite, how they created this entire infrastructure to silence a US Senate candidate down here. This was talked about in, April, in 2020. Well, regardless of what they did, I actually was winning the lawsuit and they wanted to make sure that I would capitulate and not go after the government. They wanted to put me back on Twitter. Well, half a billion people all over the world know about this. We've already won. And then Fucker Carlson came two years later and didn't want to give us a credit for we are the ones who, do, who discovered all this, including Trump and all these people. But the point is, we got it out there. Our movement got it out there. So we understand this. But what I'm trying to emphasize is all the people out there who do interviews with me and talk, they need to now get on the ground. They need to say Dr. Shiva for president. They need to take this and put it out there. All of all of them, because it's it's fun doing interviews. I could reach people with or without interviews, but those people who did interviews, all the people who've done interviews, they say, wow, Dr. Shiva, thank you so much. Thank you for the knowledge. Da, da, da. I don't see them becoming truth from health warriors. Do they not have a hundred bucks? Do they not have 50 bucks? Do they, not, do they not have time? What is the issue? So there's this big problem with talking, having these conversations and then doing you say so you have to have you know 5x action to you know five to one ratio of action to theory that's why we call our program the warrior scholar program it's not sufficient to just talk you have to walk so we have made it very opportune for people very easy go get a bumper sticker this is an act it's easy Five dollars. It's nothing. Go help us collect signatures in the rain and the snow. You realize how they rigged the system against you. You really understand. It's not just talking. You'll see it in bare view. So people have got to get involved. And we've created the infrastructure for you to get involved. Monday meetings, you know, Thursday meetings, Saturday meetings, all these events that we do to mobilize people. So all of your friends out there, get involved, get involved, get involved. Someone said, I've been saying this for uh, years. <laughs> so. Well, um, you know, we've asked for you to send us your package. If we have the bumper sticker and or when we have it, we'll happily put it on a vehicle. And yeah, yeah, you just, go In any case, just go online and order it and we send it out within 24 hours. But 
uh, wherever okay. you wherever okay. you are in every state. You know, in in Florida, we have to get three hundred thousand signatures. That means we have to mobilize a thousand people. We win anyway, even if they try to deny us. Guess what? We've mobilized a thousand people. A thousand people see us, see them denying us. That's a force. So we win regardless of what they do to us, as long as people get off their butts and mobilize and, and take even a simple action like putting a bumper sticker on. Simple action as getting on the ground and going to Shiva for president and downloading the flyer and handing it out. You have to take actions. Action is character. Character is action. Character is not talking. Let's go to the next question. Next question? Yep, sure. Okay. You often say your purpose is to create a bottoms up movement to raise consciousness, but we have not yet heard you define what is consciousness. So, factually and only factually, what do you have in mind when you say consciousness? That's a good question. So, look, um, consciousness is an emergent property that comes from going through the process of action and experience. It's the end state of experience. It is not something you sit under a freaking tree and you get enlightenment. You can have some type of enlightenment, but that level of consciousness even is very, very narrow. So the you know ancient traditions of India sent people off, or that's what people thought of it was. You go under a tree, you don't eat, you become an ascetic, and you sit and you ha see the light and you travel to the other worlds. And, you know, we can do that and have those experiences. And I've had those experiences, but that is not consciousness. Consciousness is action and experience. So you have an action and then you, that action leads to an experience and that experience leads to your raising of consciousness. So I'll give you a simple example. We have a young man, an electrician. He joins our campaign. He starts listening. Oh yeah, I gotta, I see what Dr. Shiva is saying. I gotta go act. So he gets his clipboard and he goes out in front of a Walmart and he collects signatures. He's having this experience meeting people. It's great. And then the store manager comes out, says, you can't be here. Then he says, no, I can. I have the rights to be here during an election cycle. Cops show up. They throw him in jail. They cavity search him. It's awful. But through that experience, he has advanced in consciousness to understand how the state works in a very real way that you cannot get by reading a Noam Chomsky book all day and putting your hand here and, and smoking a pipe. It's just theory. Action connected with this experience leads to an emergent property called consciousness. Consciousness, real consciousness, is an emergent property that comes from action going through leading to an experience. You have to go jump in the water. If I told you, um, a lot of people will say, oh, let's say someone who's never eaten a pomegranate. Well, I can say it's like this and it's like that and it's like this and it's like this. Oh, I see. You mean a pomegranate tastes like a tomato? Well, not really. It tastes like this. They have to go get that pomegranate, take the action, pluck it, take it from getting it from a store, wherever it is, eating it, plucking the seeds. Now they have the experience and now they raise their consciousness and understand, oh, wow, I didn't understand this. Understanding comes from action and experience. It does cannot come from simply mentally doing Facebook posts or listening to Joe Rogan all day. It's going to, in fact, lead you to unconsciousness. I hope that explains. Consciousness is a outcome of actions and experience. Actions and experience. This is why I tell people in our movement, if you're a truth from health warrior, you want to work, get out there and hand out a flyer. You can read, you know, you can read systems and revolution and we can have all sorts of discussions on what is a self-organizing system, da, 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 da. But go hand a flyer, go hand out a flyer, put a bumper sticker on and see the experience you have. See your neighbor come out and say, oh, who is this guy, Dr. Shiva? Oh, you're not supporting Biden. You're not supporting Trump. Now you have an experience. Before you put that on, you're just sitting in your neighborhood you're just doing a la-di-da-di-da -da thing, living in your little insular home. But when you take that action of putting a bumper sticker on, and by the way, it's a very courageous effort because you got to peel it off and you got to put it on your car. 
It may seem like a simple thing, but it is quite a, an act. It's a revolutionary act to put a bumper sticker on your car because you're taking a stand. You're saying, this is my car. I'm going to put it on to let everyone else know where I take a stand. And most people do not want to let anyone know what stands that they take in life. They'll talk all day long. Oh, will you come to this uh, thing to, to, with me to fight the guy? Oh, 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 I can't do that. I have a job. I may lose a job. Action, action, action. So get a bumper sticker. I want to see some action from people. You know, I want to see people walk the walk. That's what real le leaders do. They get people define the action, have an experience, raise their consciousness. That is what our movement is. What would have to happen for you to say never another interview unless they are signed up and uh, even well, if they're not acting, they're well, signed up and we, we sent them the package? Oh, what do you mean? I don't understand. You're saying, explain your question. A hypothetical question. Can you can you imagine, anticipate a situation where you say to yourself, never another interview unless there's a minimum. We know we sent them the material. Whatever they did with it, we know we sent them the material. Or maybe didn't demand more than that. They must take a photograph of the bumper yeah. sticker on the car. I like that idea. Or I, think we should, I think we should do that. I think I'm going to have our team do that. Manju and Crystal are going to do that. You want an interview with me? You like me a lot. You know, you think I'm great. Awesome. You like our movement. Put a bumper sticker on. Let's see it. It's a good idea, Ed. I like it. Love it. Uh, short story was in front of us. I'm not suggesting you do that. I, no, I, did I, ask I, I, I like it. I like, I like it. Let me just, I'm going to have to share this with you. Um, everyone out there to follow up on what he just said, which is, a very, very practical thing because it takes, you know, I'm giving a lot of my time, energy. It's not going to Cytosolve. It's not going to system self, you know? Um, so I think it's a very fair thing for me to ask people. So if I go here and let me go, if you, if everyone goes to Shiva for president right now, we made the website, by the way, the, the government says there's no website. <laughs> we don't exist. Well, this website's been up there, but if you click on free downloads, it's free. You can go get this wonderful little flyer, and we have it in many, many different languages. In fact, we've open sourced everything, our cards, our bumper stickers. So if you don't want to pay, you can download and print this at your local store or, or paint it if you want with stencils. But this flyer is in color. You could go to your library and print it out for free. But everyone should download this flyer and print it and hand out millions of these. That's what people power is. People power is not whining and thinking someone's going to do stuff for you it's us doing it um ourselves and that's what we're talking about so yeah i uh i, I think i think i'm gonna raise a bar on that it's a good idea it didn't help to think it because you we unintentionally got you pissed off angry enough where you suddenly blurted out maybe i'm gonna start blah blah not do an interview unless that us so it made us ask ourselves well hypothetically, what has to happen for him to reach the boiling point where no more interviews? I only have an, only these specific people can interview me. Yeah, I think we're going to do that because, you know, like Mike Adams, he always calls me whenever something's going viral and he puts me on and they said, oh, Dr. Shiva, I'm in your camp. I totally support you. I'm here to, you know, fight for you. And then the next day he's sucking Trump's cock saying, oh, Trump is our only way out or Booby's cock, you know? I like Mike, but Mike should start putting our bumper stickers on. He should put it on there. We have to have men who are men. You know, I find women far more powerful than men these days because women have had to take care of kids. They got to do stuff. Men have become very, very limp, to say, to put it bluntly. Not all men, but a lot of men. They'll talk, talk, talk. Now do this. Oh, well, uh, I, I can't do that. What would people think? Ah, uh, well, shut the fuck up then. Limp, no pun intended. Yep. Yep. Limp. Well, cock, speaking cock, of Zionist cocksuckers, we cannot help remembering when uh, I believe it was Sean of SGT report, despite your impassioned pleas, uh, arguments, stories, he, to our surprise, said, I'm going to vote for Trump, even after exactly saying that he doesn't like Trump and this and that, which confused me. 
making me wonder. It reminds me of a meme I saw the other day, a photo of Biden, and the words on the meme was, how much treason is necessary before traitors are taken to task? What is, what, what is the, the limit? So it yeah. confuses me when people agree with you, yeah, lesser of two evils, but they still, it reminds me of another influencer where he said, I'm not voting for an effing psyop. Yeah. Well, I'm not voting for an effing psyop. Well, someone just put up here, uh, you know, this. there's this other fool, Andrew Tate, complete disgusting human being, in my view, right? Says enough anti-stuff, so all these fools follow him, right? And I think what's happened is that you have to look at people's actions. Are they building a movement? So what you see now happening is the old swarm establishment media is dying. And the neo swarm establishment is coming. The Alex Jones, the Joe Rogans, the Fucker Carlsons. They're presenting. They're like the neo establishment. So right when they get created, you know, if you follow the theory, not only the capital T theory, the dynamics I've shared with people, whenever the establishment, the swarm has its outward facing media, they all always have their not so obvious establishment. They ha they need they need bo both heads to manipulate people. So now you see this new, you know, group of, you know, neo-establishment media coming. So they automatically create the swarm. I mean, they create the not so obvious establishment, the Candace Owens, Ike sort of stays on the fringes, says still shit. He puts my stuff out there. Mike Adams puts my stuff out there. But ultimately, they're going to become the next generation not so obvious establishment. And the litmus test is very, very simple on all these guys. Do they get people on the ground building a movement? Number one, do they say Zionist cocksucker? Number two, three, are they actively pushing truth, freedom, and health and Dr. Shiva? If those three aren't true, doing out there, they're part of the not so obvious establishment. That's how simple the science is. Three things. Are they anti-Zionist? Are they actively pushing our movement, knowing that we're the real deal? Do they put me on their shows and their interviews? If they don't do that, all three of them, they're full of shit, period. And I'm giving you a simple scientific test because we are the tip of the spear of a real movement, which is educating people, raising their consciousness, getting them on the ground, period. So that's what's good. We, have, we have a real good You're opportunity real. now, you know, in the world. So you realize in their mind, they see this as a math issue. Well, I have to vote. They don't have to, but they're thinking I have to vote. We don't see Shiva has enough numbers. So even though we prefer him as POTUS, he has no chance of winning, which yeah. then raises the deeper question. How can one mathematically prove that you have sufficient numbers? Maybe maybe that's what would push them over the edge. No, 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 that's not it, okay? The issue is you have to understand these pu these people are pussies. Okay? They have an economic model like Alex Jones to make money off selling shit. If you talk to David Knight, when David Knight left Alex Jones, he and I did a couple of interviews. He said he knows behind closed door, Alex says Trump's full of shit, but he needs to make his couple of million bucks a day selling supplements. You got it? So Mike needs to sell his prepper shit. So they put their economic economics before principles. I've done the exact opposite. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Do you have balls? Are you a real man? They're not. And no matter how much convincing, they're not going to do it because they do not have the real wherewithal to stand up on their own two feet and know that they can make it and they should stand for principles. Real men have principles. People without principles are not men. These people are not men. Trump is not a man. Booby Kennedy is not a man. All these influencers around them are actually pussies. And I mean pusillanimous. No derogatory thing against uh, women because women are I wish, strong. I wish, I wish we had Mike Adams and Sean and anyone else on right now to give a comeback to that thought. There is I no comeback. There is no comeback. I was suspect they would say, I am a man. 
Yeah, well, how dare you say I'm not a man? I am a man. It doesn't matter what There's you say. Why are you why, why are you promoting? Either not vote. Why are you not vote at all? Yeah. Or vote for Shiva, or vote for the lesser of two evils. Those well, are the three. You can't, you can't say on one video broadcast, "I love you, Doctor Shiva." You're it, and the next video, you're sucking Ken Kennedy's cock, who's a Zionist cocksucker. It doesn't fucking compute. It says you want to have your cake and eat it too. It says you're a bullshitter. That's what it says. Look at people's actions, period. Otherwise, if you don't want to look at their actions, you might as just well, well go to some evangelical church and listen to your preacher who talks a bunch of shit and then goes bangs every woman in, in, in church. Same thing. So consciousness is more than awareness and it's no, irrelevant. It's not awareness. Con That's what I was just saying. Yeah. Much more than awareness. It's consciousness is action through experience. Action. Yes. Look, if you watch a movie and you look at a character, a good writer defines a character by his action. Character is action. Action is character. Character is defined by your action. What the fuck did you do? I love Dr. Shiva. Oh, here, all the Trumpers, I'm going to vote for Trump now. What the fuck? Come on. Uh, we, I, I we, we can't for children's, I'm for Children's Health Defense Fund. Go bomb the shit out of Palestine. These people are assholes. These people are not human beings. They have no cojones. They will not stand up for anything. They will not die for anything. Because they think this world is it. You know, they haven't had any experience of actual work, labor of spirit. None of that. They're they're not even, you know, a kind-hearted animal. They're way below that. They're devils. Next question. Isn't America supposed to be a so-called republic, i.e. based upon true leaders representing we the people and not misleaders from the swarm, i.e. they the parasitic 0.001% ruling class. Put differently, isn't the so-called electoral college supposed to preserve a republic? Put differently, what is a democracy really and or republic-based government? I.e., who owns, controls the correct true definition of these highly charged, often vaguely defined and misunderstood words is it any wonder many of the uh have used the word democrat and instead changed it to democrat and or republicrat of the so-called uniparty aka agents of the swarm your thoughts yes yeah, so i think your fundamental question is what is a democracy am i right if i were to distill what you and, just said and what is a republic and what is america really intended right. to be but the founders and or should be in hell with the founders what should america yeah be? yeah so i think you know again we have to go back to understand that when the founders were defining this thing called america they were at a point in history you know in the 1776 if you look in the you know i mean by the late 18th century by even the late 17th century you had this phenomenon called feudalism, which was starting to on its way down, right? Feudalism was the concept of a monarchy, the concept of uh, a king who said that he, sh he has a right to rule over subjects because he has a direct connection to God. You know, this concept of primogeniture, right? The concept of that God anoints a king, and then the king is the one who takes care of his subjects. So this was a concept of where the monarchy said they derived their power because they had some secret direct connection to God, which we didn't have. So that concept of the monarchy, which is a governance system, was based on supporting a very lucrative economic system for that monarchy, which was they owned land, they owned property, and it was theirs, and people worked on their land for some percentage of something that they farmed, et cetera. Feudal culture was primarily agrarian, um, you know, uh, and the monarchs, the monarchy was a governance system. Now, that system was starting to decline. And there was a new system coming up called the rise of the entrepreneur, the rise of the mercantile class. And that point 
is what the American Revolution really is about. It's not a workers revolution. It's not about the broad mass of working people rising up because the concept of a worker didn't even exist. What we consider a wage slave, someone getting a salary. Around up until that point, most people worked on farms, sharecroppers, you know, in fields. Um, a, a master owned the land, and then people had their little places that they. So we have to really understand where the founders were, right? They were wanting to break from this feudal system and to move their society, which they called America, into a mercantile system. And a mercantile system in that model was based on you sow what you reap, right? So that was the environment that they created, right? And these states were like little businesses, corporations, each had their own area. And then the federal government was like the holding company, okay? So the concept of a republic in this model was, they said, okay, all of these individual corporations could have their own you know, governance structures within, and then they were connected through this form uh, at least at the presidential level, through an electoral college. And the electoral college, their concept was that this would make sure that not any one state had preeminence over other states, okay? That was a concept. All right, but nonetheless, in my view, you have to again go back and look at the founders or mercantiles. They didn't really like the broad mass of bottoms people, but they had to give them some rights so they work with them as partners to fight against the monarchy. So that's what what where the real um, business arrangement was made between, between the mercantile class and this emergent group of peasants who were starting to become workers. And that needs to be understood economically from a governance system. That's what was taking place. So having said that, the laws, the bones that they threw to the broad masses of people was by no means to make an egalitarian system for everyone. Let's be clear. It was really to support the mercantile process, okay? So in some ways, they went one step forward, you know, or two steps forward and one step back. They held back. The electoral college was a way to keep the masses in check. So for example, in a very practical way, in every state that we're running, we not only have to get signatures to get on the ballot, but I have to choose electors. So when someone votes for me in a state, as you know, and those of you who don't know, um, when I say you to the interviewer, he definitely knows this. But those of you who don't know, you're not voting for me. You're voting for my slate of electors. So Trump will have his slate of electors. Biden will have his slate of electors, let's say in the state of Massachusetts, and I'll have my state of electors. So when you go, I'm voting for Dr. Shiva, you're actually voting for my electors. Let's say I win the majority or the plurality of the vote in that state, then my electors are supposed to then say, we want Dr. Shiva. Now, reality is they could backstab me, right? They could vote for Biden or Trump. And in my view, that's what the Electoral College was set up for. So the bourgeois, bourgeois democracy could take place because clearly you could have just made it popular vote and even in that case, whoever got the majority of popular vote in that state or the plurality, it should go to, let's say, Shiva. So it's, it is direct. So they didn't do that. They created the Electoral College to keep the masses in check. So I'm opposed to that. Now, you have to recognize that if you want to believe in the concept of a republic, these states have rights and you don't want to just create one united state, right? Let's everyone is part of this nation state, um, then you, we have the technology and the capability to go to direct democracy. It's all there in front of us. And I think that's where this should go. I don't think we need politicians. I don't think, frankly, we need the concept of the representative democracy was created. We're at intermediaries at a time when you had horses and buggies. Okay. And perhaps some people couldn't study everything or didn't have the time. I still think you can do that where you can say, look, on this issue, let's say all 300 million people or 250 eligible people, million people in the United States could vote, they could vote on any issue, or they may say, you know what, I'm going to pro give a proxy of my vote. I'm going to choose this person to be my proxy. Proxy meaning, hey, Bob, I, you know, you're a wise person. Whenever, um, whatever you vote, I'm going to go with you. 
So that's another way of doing it where you directly choose people to be a representative on a case, ba case by case basis. And with technology, this is totally possible at this point. And I think that that's where this should go. And so therefore we don't even need quote unquote elections. You have issues that are brought up by the public and they're voted on by the public or their proxies that they choose from time to time. That's where I think this should all go. That, that would be real democracy. So when you see the phrase often used by numerous broadcasters, this is a danger to our democracy. You acknowledge that's a lie. It's actually a reference to a, a fascistic, yeah, tyrannical. Exactly. When they're saying this is a danger to our democracy, they're saying this is the danger to the swarms, bourgeois democ democratic structures, which are meant to keep the slaves on the plantation. That's what they mean. So it's necessary to educate the masses, the true meaning of democracy. And you would argue that it's superior to republicanism, the idea of a republic, because you see republic equals electoral college, not a democracy. Yeah, I mean, look, the concept of having representatives, right? That That's really this fundamental concept. In between go-betweens. Every other, I mean, think about what the internet, ultimately the vision of it was, it eliminates intermediaries. Before you had a travel agent you'd have to go through to get a ticket, well, you go direct now. Before you had to go, if you're an artist, you needed an art gallery. Well, now you go direct, you, you build your own website, you sell it directly. So every other area of human existence is being disintermediated and it should be fully disintermediated. You know, in many ways, the legal system and po uh, the political class also need to be disintermediated. We don't need them. They serve no purpose at all. It's fascinating. The word republic sounds like republic as if the people again. Right. As if So the, the root may be representative of the public, may be the root meaning of republic. Right. In any case. But all these terms get, get hijacked, you know. For clarification, when we, and we believe when you use the word blow up, we don't, we're not talking about throwing Molotov cocktails or explosives. We mean, um, what is the phrase you use? Yeah, I am uh, a- I am, a Complete systems overhaul. That's yes, what you mean by- I mean a systems overhaul, system. right. My position on this whole thing is that, you know, con raising consciousness, your understanding of things, is the ultimate nuclear weapon. You know, I got my gun, I got my second amendment. Well, that's not really raising consciousness because you could be manipulated. We're talking about, we say blowing up. We're talking about blowing up those neural networks in your brain that put, keep you in bondage. That's where the blowing up has to begin <laughs> because otherwise any other blowing up is terrorism, which is what the elites want. Terrorism always leads to fascism. In fact, this is why the elites run false flags, because they love terrorism. Terrorism gives them the rights to say, see, these rabble rousers are doing this. We have to create this law, that law, da, 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 da. But it's very hard for them to stop the raising of consciousness. And the raising of consciousness is what blows up the system. This is why we say we need a systems overhaul. And the systems overhaul begins, as I shared here, let me share that back with you so you get it here. That systems overhaul begins by us recognizing that when you look at this flyer that we put out and you look at it carefully, this systems overhaul is much needed because the life expectancy in a very practical way of the United States public is going down, a big curvature downwards. And this was caused by both wings of the swarm. The swarm caused this. The elites, the Hollywood actors, actresses, the uh, academics, everyone. And this has been occurring for nearly 60 years. So we need a systems overhaul. And that de demands a bottoms up movement. And as we said, a bottoms up movement is about raising consciousness, which is about action and experience. And then you start by wanting to understand the swarm. You take an action by wanting to come to our town hall. You don't sit on your butts and just watch this. You get off your butts and you say, oh, I got to do this now. Okay. Let me go to the open house. Let me go take an action. 
It's not about simply talking. So that's what I mean. Yeah. And, and, you know, to your question, you can see someone's consciousness. Some people, you know, we've had people in our movement who watched me for nearly, um, you know, two years, they'll see me, watch me, watch me. And they'll be sitting, sitting, watching their computer, never doing anything. And then one day this happened to a, a young man who's an IT professional, very smart guy. He said, wow, I saw you out in the cold, you know, with a blowhorn and a mic mobilizing people to do your deep state tour. And I said, what the fuck am I doing? I'm sitting in this nice warm home. And what am I doing? So that was a raise in consciousness. You see, watching, 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 boom, let me go do something. And he's become one of our great leaders now in the New York area. Another guy watching videos, he sees me expose Joe Rogan and Kennedy. And then he says, wow, I was about to give $25,000 to that fool. And then he comes to our open house. That's a raise in consciousness. But it is action that raises consciousness. It is not sitting and meditating on your navel that raises consciousness. That may give you some understanding, but that is not consciousness raising. Before we forget, quick story about a month ago when you said, um, I don't see those people doing signatures. I think they're all fake. They're collecting stuff from the DMV. We have actually, about a month ago, saw a young, somewhat overweight kid, probably teens, possibly early 20s. He had a clipboard. We asked what he was up to, and he said he was collecting signatures for Canada. We asked who, and he says, Kennedy, can you sign? And I said, I can't for this reason. And I gave him a slip of paper with shivaforpresident.com <laughs> on it. Yeah. Said, you, need to check, you need to check this guy out. And, and that's all I'll say for now. I've got to go. So uh, I should have asked. Oh, yeah. And I also asked him, are you being paid? He was like, he, said, he yeah. said, yes. Right. He said, yes, I'm being paid. In any case. You know how much uh, he's being paid? He's being paid $10 a signature. Did you know that? I recall you mentioned that some time right. ago. So Kennedy's got to collect 1.5 million. He has no volunteers. He has no base. He went to a bunch of Zionist hoodlums who are giving him money. That's This is not a movement. This is like total farce. We're actually building the real movement. And I really thank you for sharing that. Our volunteers are actually working people who have jobs. They're not signature collectors, not their job. They work as an electrician. They work as a nurse. They work as a cytologist. They work as, a, you know, they're doing full-time you know, machinists. Then they come out to do that. This should be absolutely illegal. The whole goal of this was to get on the ballot. You have real citizens supporting you. This is fake. It's a fake campaign. Next question. How can you, as POTUS, quote unquote, oh, oh we want to actually clarify. When you say blow up in your brain, you don't mean the tissue physical. You mean the mind being the brain is the wetware or hardware, and the mind is the thoughts, the electrical impulses well, we experience I, as consciousness. Well, what I, to be specific, you know, when you study neural networks in the brain, um, you know, the work of, there was an American psychologist by the name of William James. He wrote a uh, essay on associative memory. And what this means is when you most, uh, the brain is actually like a muscle. If you lift weights and you work your brain, you realize they're not that different. You have two neurons here, or groups of neurons. And when you start learning, let's say, to ride a bicycle, the connection strengths between those neurons start increasing. You're actually getting them stronger, okay? So if you look at blobs of neurons, there's blobs of neurons which have connection strengths be between them that get stronger as you repeat. Repetition is a mother of skill. So if you keep hearing Lesser of two evils is the only way. Lesser of two evils is the only way. Oh, no independent can run. No independent can run. You know, da, da, da. A natural born citizen can't be president. You're literally retraining these neurons. And those myelin sheets get very, you know, thick. And you are basically getting programmed. So when we say blow up the brain, we're saying blow up those neural networks to slap you, you know, in a digital way or through my voice to say, wait a minute, why did you just call someone Zionist cocksucker? Oh my God, what do you mean by that? Why did you say house nigga? 
Why did you say that? Oh my God, an MIT PhD should not be saying that. You're supposed to be using very nice, calm words and you should be talking like this, like, you know, like a good Indian, right? Right? And you should always be saying what to do, right? No. That language is precisely intended to blow up those neural connections which have been programmed by the elites. And you must use these words to support your growth. You must use the word Zionist cocksucker. You must use that word. Because the more you say it, you'll realize, well, what's wrong with that word? It's actually absolutely true. You must use the word fucker Carlson. You must use the word get off the plantation. And you must use the words house slave, field slave, house nigga, field nigga. Because why? Because the elites don't want you to use that word. They think by not using that word, we've solved slavery. No, we are all niggas on the white liberal plantation, on the swarms plantation. We are. And we should embrace that word. Because the more you accept it, you say, wow, I am a fucking slave. Now the issue is, do I want to get off the plantation? These words are very, very important. Those words are a way to blow up these very, very rusted neural networks, which are used to mentally enslave you. I hope that answered your question. It does. Uh, it seems like you don't distinguish between brain and mind. We think of brain as the physical gray well, matter and well, mind as... I mean, well, just, no, not, not really. Software. No, no. I don't want to draw these lines because as someone who studied all of these, the spiritualists seem to separate mind, body, and soul. It's fucking stupid. It's all one. It's a spectrum. Information, matter, and energy. It's a free-flowing form. We shouldn't, we should not get lost. Oh, the mind, the body, the soul. No, it's information, matter, and energy moving, flowing through all three aspects. You see, it's a very different definition I just gave you. The mind, the body, and the soul. Well, <laughs> they're all the same. It's where you put attention. Are you putting attention on your thoughts? Are you putting attention in the body? Are you putting attention in the energy, the actions? You see? We should not get lost in these ridiculous separations because that is the way the religious people manipulate people. It is all one, moving through these states of information, matter, and energy. We'll meditate on that. You may have answered the following question. How can Was that meant you... to be a pun? <laughs> Excuse me? Was that meant to be a pun? You'll meditate on that? Um, no. Okay. But we'll accept the, the pun yeah. aspect of it. Yeah. How can you, you, you may have answered this, so you'll expand. How can you, your movement, and when I say you, I mean your movement. How can your movement as POTUS, quote unquote, blow up, to use your words, the fake Senate hyphen Congress misleaders, fake representatives system that are really not working for we, the people, but actually for they, them, those who bribed, blackmailed, brainwashed, and or bullied them? Well, it's not how it's doing, it's already doing it. So to everyone joining us, you know, the discussion we're having is how to how we shatter the swarm, right? That's what we're talking about. Um, number one, we're already shattering the swarm. Let me give you the actual data on this. So who is the swarm? If everyone goes and watches Shatter the Swarm video, which everyone should do with their children and their families, it's one of the most not only thought-provoking videos, I'm just going to put it up here, shattertheswarm.com, but it's one of the most important educational videos of our times because it'll actually give you a knowledge of system science and how the swarm is a decentralized way that the elites work together. How are we shattering the swarm? Well, I've been doing this most of my life, but if you look in 2020, when the quote unquote pandemic was unleashed on everyone, there was only one person who came out hard against the pandemic first. That was me, March of 2020, saying this pandemic will is a way for them to push mandated medicine, destroy, you know, uh, uh, freedom and to destroy the economy. And all of those came. I was the first one against lockdowns. We were the ones who organized the fire Fauci campaign. And we saw in bare view the not so obvious establishment. Who were they? Trump and Booby fucking Kennedy. It was obvious that the Hillary Clintons and those people are the obvious establishment. Booby Kennedy promoted lockdowns. Booby Kennedy was telling that I shouldn't be running strong protests because he wanted to negotiate with the Democrats. We have all of the receipts on this. Booby Kennedy 
had to be called out. And so in 2020, and I used the basic understanding of system science to call them out, we lost 20% of our followers. And it was good we called the herd. These people wanted to just suck booby Kennedy Zionist cock all day. Why? Because they want to sit on their nice posh homes in Scarsdale, drink their martinis, give money to booby fucking Kennedy and say, I'm supporting medical freedom. No, you're not. The guy actually believes in sustaining the swarm and help and, and making sure everyone is fully vaccinated by his own words. That's what he says. Now, no one ever has called out booby Kennedy from the position of he's not really for medical freedom. Most of the people hitting him are the so-called fake, you know, anti, <laughs> not so obvious establishment people saying, oh, boobies, you know, an anti-vaxxer. But the reality was we called him out under the right goal. This guy's part of the swarm. We lost 20% of our followers. But you know what's happened now? Between then and now, because we hit the truth and we shared the truth and we acted on the truth, what has happened? When he says bullshit, everyone goes, it's not just me. People refer to my tweets and this guy's full of shit. He wants to bomb children in Palestine. He was supporting lockdowns. That's how we shattered the swarm. We say the right thing at the right time. We educate people. Now we have millions of people who know who Booby Kennedy's because of the right action I took at the right time. Take fucking Trump. You know, initially I gave Trump, you know, some string for, to, for him to hang his neck on. And eventually what, what ends up happening? He exposes himself fully. He supports Fauci, gives Fauci a commendation award 12 hours before he leaves office. He supports Operation Warp Speed. And again, I had to be the first person to call him out in a substantial way, not from the left, but actually from the position of this guy's not an agent of change. Again, we lost another 20% of our followers. But now people are far more hesitant because we're shattering the swarm. We're breaking up those neural networks. We're blowing up people's neural networks in their minds. We're doing that. And that is because of this movement. Now, a movement like ours, if it did not exist, people would be just moving right into the flytrap of Booby or Trump without even thinking. But because our movement exists, people like Mike Adams are a little bit more on check. Sometimes he's got to put me on just to keep his audience, you know, feeling like though, as though he's telling truth or even Sean, like you said, okay, because we exist, the true, the true, you know, um, purveyors, the true, we, the people, we, the people now what's occurred is they don't know which way to go. So they have Candace Owen acting like she's anti-Zionist, right? When she's still part of the swarm. So the swarm is wiggling, trying to figure out how do they create their next not so obvious establishment because we've exposed Rogan, we've exposed Fucker Carlson, we've exposed Trump, and we've exposed Booby and et cetera and Tulsi Gabbard. These people were the people they were going to use to sucker people into the swarm. Well, we've demolished those people. And so they have to create the next not so obvious establishment. So we got them on the run. And the way we shatter the swarm, the fundamental way we shatter the swarm is to understand the system science. People have to understand system science. They have to understand truth, freedom, and health cannot be separated. They all come together as one. I'd like to just play our uh, last video and then we'll come back with one more question. Is that all right? Yes, future okay. president of the United States. All right, thank you. <laughs> we have allowed our country to be taken over from within. And the end goal is you will have a homogenized world. We have allowed our country to be taken over from within. And the end goal is you will have a homogenized world where we will become slaves. Because there is a condition among the elites that really thinks they're better than you, deep down inside them, that you don't deserve the freedoms you have. They don't. This reality is what people need to wake up to. And we need to all unite working people. There's only one movement that can do that. And that is the movement that we started creating here in Massachusetts, the movement for truth, freedom, and health. Look, I've been a student of politics since I was a four-year-old kid, studying revolutionary movements, left wing, right wing. There's a physics, there's a nuclear science to destroying the establishment. To build a bridge, you need to understand Newton's equation. You need to understand the laws of gravity. You need to understand Poisson's ratio. There is a way to build a revolution. 
And that's why I put this together. My goal is to train a army of truth, freedom, and health leaders. We don't need followers like social media. We need leaders, but they need training because the educational system does not teach them history, nothing. So in three hours, that's what I've started doing. That's the solution. Wow. We gotta train people. First with understanding what a system is, the dynamics of all systems that affect nature. The second is understanding the interconnection between truth, freedom, and health. Freedom is the ability to move freely, communicate freely, talk freely. Without freedom, you cannot convert ideas hypothesis into truth, which is science. And without freedom, you can't really get to truth. And without truth, you make up fake problems and fake solutions, which means you destroy our health. And without health, which is the infrastructure of us and our body, you can't fight for freedom. Truth, freedom, health. Third concept is it has to be bottoms up, working people, people who work uniting. And what the right wing has done is whenever you say working people unite, that must be communist. Meanwhile, they've let the Democrats run unions, which suppress workers, completely corrupt. But when you look at the arc of American history, it's been when working people came up. We need to go local. Every solution I'm coming up with as a part of this movement, we're giving the science, which is the truth, and then we tell people what they can do on the ground. Like with election fraud, you don't need to wait for some lawyer. Our goal is to train people to go local, to go local, to go local, fight locally. Forget lawyers, forget politicians, Forget celebrities, you've got to learn politics, and there is a science to it. They lock us down, we should be ready to shut them down. And the fourth part of this principle is the not so obvious establishment. So when you look at a system, there's always something that disturbs you from getting to your goal. Well, the biggest disturbance is the not so obvious establishment, which are those people who claim they're for you, on the left and the right, the Al Sharptons who tell black people I'm for you, the Tucker Carlsons. Do you think any true anti-establishment person will ever be on Fox or CNN? I don't think so. They both mislead working people back into the establishment. Without this solid understanding of political physics and theory, you're screwed. You're going to follow on the left wing, Bernie Sanders, oh, he said something, or Robert Kennedy, scumbags. Or you're going to follow some right wing talk show host. They're not going to lead us to liberation. It's us. We're building a bottoms up movement. And that political physics, it's a nuclear science of change bottoms up. We have to organize to understand that there is people who talk a good game and then look at what they actually do, left and right. I'm sorry, Sean Hannity may say some good things, but I don't see the urgency in his voice to get something done. And it can only come when you weaponize yourself with the right knowledge. You need to be able to identify a rat. You know, Christ didn't go after the Romans, right? It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who screwed him up. His own quote unquote people. And that's where we're at. So these four concepts I've built into a curriculum where people can go to truthfreedomhealth.com and it's an educational program. We need to train people in political theory. You need to have physics. And I've created that curriculum. People need to get educated. We need to get educated fast. And within a half an hour, an hour, I can teach people two years of MIT control systems. I teach people those concepts. Then I apply it. Anyone can understand it. And then you say, oh, I got to build a bottoms up movement. They have to get politically astute, and then they have to go locally and act, not sit there on social media. They have to act locally, defy locally, do civil obedience locally, but with knowledge on how to build a movement. And the Senate campaign's expanded to the movement for truth, freedom, and health, and they can find it on truthfreedomhealth.com so people can sign in, they can get access to a bunch of videos. If they want to take a course and become a truth, freedom, health leader, I offer a full scholarship there, but we want people to make a commitment that they'll study, that they'll get certified, that they'll go do activities on the ground. So go to truthfreedomhealth.com. All right, everyone, we're going to take one more question. I just want to, again, uh, emphasize to everyone, we have a movement. Go become a truth, freedom, and health warrior. If you made it this far, come to our open house. And this is to everyone listening. If you come once, come again. But every um, Thursdays, uh, tomorrow, 11 a.m., and also at 8 p.m., we host open houses. It's a lot of time, a lot of commitment, but we enjoy bringing new people in. So 11 a.m. EST, you can go to vashiva.com right there dot com slash orientation and sign up and we have a town hall shiva for president dot com slash town hall get involved it's a simple way you don't have to do much 
we have to do the work and setting it up and talking and creating the presentation, but you get to meet a lot of great people and you get to, uh, we, we lead you on a path to get involved. So we'll take one more question and uh, then we'll wrap up and I'm sure maybe we'll have a follow-up. Are you there? Okay. Yep. Let's take one Let's, more question. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, way, thank you for these well thought out questions. Cheek. I know it took a lot of effort for you to organize them, so I appreciate the effort that you put in. Well, let's talk reality now. We never know when we're going to leave this world. Every moment is precious. Let's assume that you never hear from Matrices Warrior Chronicles again. We would like to tell a brief story and give our best idea on how to shatter the swarm much more powerful than adding that natural born stuff to your litigation, which is this. Um, and we've only reached question 17 of 100 or more. So we'll see if we can get your bumper sticker soon enough to take a photograph of it on a vehicle to allow us to ask more questions. <laughs> In any case, That's just, your idea. I like it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take it. It's a good idea. Um, brief, brief story. And then the idea on shattering the swarm, there's a wonderful Indonesian superhero movie called, we believe it's called, uh, pronounced Gundala. Uh -huh. That's a, ma a masked superhero. He has a mask and he gets power from bolts of lightning. After a heroic action uh, scene fighting the bad guys, uh, someone asks, who are you? And he says something like, no one, and then walks off. And they say, I want to tell the people who you are. And he pauses and turns and says, just tell them I'm one of them. I'm one of you. I'm one of the people. And that's it. Uh, this is the best idea in shattering the swarm. Let's go with the idea, worst case scenario, SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States, will not hear your uh, case and or they produce some ridiculous one-page dismissal. Get millions, whatever it is, hundreds of thousands, millions of people to take a photo of their face with their ballot, showing your name on the ballot, put it on your website, get it all over social media so that if the numbers are high enough, well, actually, no matter what, whether you're, whether you're getting a, a million people to vote for you or 20 million, whatever it is, declare yourself as the legitimate winner of the presidency of the United States. And don't say me, say we, we the people, the truth, freedom and health movement, we are the true POTUS because the, the more noise you can create, the more people are likely to show up at particular situations that have to be addressed immediately. You know, in spirit uh, with the phrase, they lock us down, we need to be ready to lock them down. Exactly. And that's, that's the idea because the we, we just can't predict you know we have to fight and litigate and so forth right and we could eventually probably would eventually will in that win in that way but that eventuality notwithstanding or whatever the correct word is if plan a doesn't work plan b may be better to actually have the numbers and mobilize through the web because we perhaps are more fortunate than the egypt situation where mubarak shut down social media the powers that should not be here in America may not ever have the gumption to actually shut the web. So as long as the web is there and there's a way of quickly sending out messages to arrive at particular places, uh, then that, that's as powerful or more powerful than the presidency. Because ultimately, as I've said to associates, politicians are really, they're no different than a barking dog, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, they're dressed in, in three piece suits. You know, they might as well be yelling at the top of their lungs from, right. from an apartment building. The only reason that anyone takes them seriously is because they have a small or large army waiting in the wings to carry out exactly. what they say. Well, the That's politician it. is really a puppet of the swarm. You know, they do some shindig call a debate and an election to figure out who can manipulate people. But anyway, this is great. Let's uh, continue. And uh, yeah, let's talk offline. Uh, maybe you can set up some time with um, Manju for Crystal, you and I to follow up. Let's do that at some point. Well, my thought is it's the cops ultimately that you have to reach. Yeah. Because if you can win over the law enforcement, the people that carry the guns, they won't listen. 
Yeah. They will join the people. Yeah. As you well, said, that's, they're that's, the ones who make the difference in the movements. It's the yeah, top. I mean, if you go look back at the Boston Free Speech Rally, you know, where we took a stand, we organized a free speech rally in the, and it's called the Boston Commons, which was historically the place where you had open speech uh, for many, many, you know, multiple centuries. That uh, when we went out there, the government branded us as Nazis. They said I was a Nazi because we had people from all different spectrums wanting to speak. And they riled up 40,000 people to show up against 40 of us. You can see it. Just type in Boston Free Speech Rally. Everyone should go do that. And many of these young kids had never seen these kind of people. And, you know, we led that movement. And many of the cops, you know, the, the government essentially takes uses cops, right? Um, right now they're using cops that are not educating them on the fact that we're allowed to collect signatures. So the police actually are get used by the cops. And um, so anyway, it was 40,000 people. You can see it versus 40 of us. This was on August 2017. Everyone should go look at that. And the reality was many of the police have great respect in Boston for the work that I did because they knew that we stood on principle and how the government almost got them killed. So I understand that. But, you know, we don't have a plan A or plan B. We only have plan A. Plan A is build the movement and you will never lose by building the movement. Anyway, thank you. Uh, everyone, I hope this is valuable. Again, everyone, get off your butts. We're going to give you, again, the formula or simple things you can do because we know everyone has different levels of work. Go get a bumper sticker. Go to Shiva for president, number one. Number two, go to Shiva for president and get one of those flyers. This is something everyone can go can do. You go to Shiva for president. You can hit download and you will actually see if you click on free downloads, you get access to this flyer. Download this flyer. It's open sourced. Hand it out to all your friends. Because it explains to people what is going on, what's going on with the fact that the lifespan of your child is now shorter than yours. You can also have other things, lawn signs, cards, bumper stickers, or just go here and shop and shop here, okay? Order stuff. Give your money to the right cause. We don't charge a lot. If you want to donate, great. When you donate to us, there's a little donate button here. I give you all sorts of information. I give you books and content and courses because it's hard for me to take something from people without giving anything. That's just sort of how I was brought up. So get involved. You have many, many different opportunities to get involved, but fundamentally one of the most powerful ways to get involved is volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. And then finally go to truthfreedomhealth.com and become a warrior scholar. Anyway, I hope this was valuable as, and I'm just, uh, if you can stay on hold, as we sign off, I just want you to all remember what we're we need doing. We to build the Bottoms Up movement. Go to shivaforpresident.com and volunteer.